Greeting everyone and welcome to Yes Income channel. Our topic today will be about a very toxic, poisonous and dangerous gas. They call him the invisible killer H2S gas. Hydrogen sulfide H2S is a gas commonly found during the drilling and production of a crude oil and natural gas. H2S exists in wastewater treatment and utility facilities and sewers. The gas is produced as a result of microbial breakdown of organic materials in the absence of oxygen. H2S is a colorless, flammable, poisonous, and corrosive. It can be noticeable by its rotten egg smell. Monitoring and early detection of H2S could mean the difference between life and death. At a low level, hydrogen sulfide can cause irritation to the eyes, nose, and throat. A moderate levels can cause headache, dizziness, and vomiting, as well as coughing and difficulty in breathing. A higher level of H2S can cause shock, coma, and even a sudden death. The measurement of hydrogen sulfide H2S in a crude oil is a critical practice for safety concerns and a quality control. Hydrogen sulfide is heavier than the air and it will settle into a low areas. In a confined space it can quickly reach to a highest concentration. H2S acidifies water which causes beating corrosion to carbon steel pipelines. Corrosion reaction will increase fast when it combines with oxygen and carbon dioxide. Thus, they can significantly reduce surface life of transportation pipelines and processing facilities in oil and gas industries. Hydrogen sulfide react with the metal ions to form a metal sulfide, which are insoluble and often a dark color solids. H2S can be tested in a gas phase or dissolved in a liquid phase. The measurement of H2S in the liquid phase is appropriate for a product quality control, while the measurement of H2S in the vapor phase is appropriate for the health and safety concerns. There are different methods to analyze H2S in a gas as well in a liquid phase. In this video, we will follow the STM standard method for H2S above crude in the gas phase and we will talk about the gigity method for the liquid phase. Now we will talk about the ASTM standard method for testing H2S above crude oil. First collect two bottles of one liter samples and minimize the headspace and close them tightly. Allow the sample to set to the room temperature for one hour. Bring other two empty bottles and transfer 50% plus or minus 5% of the sample and discard the remaining. Burge with the nitrogen for 30 seconds to displace the air and the water vapor. Close the sample bottle. Place the samples in the water bath at 60 degree plus or minus 1 degree for 30 minute minimum from the time it reached 60 degree. Shake the samples for 5 minutes. Rest the bottles and remove the bottle cap and seal the bottles with the aluminum foil immediately. Select the right detector tubes and break it using the detector pump. Insert the tubes through the aluminum foil. Do not allow the detector tubes to contact the liquid face. Read the tubes and take in consideration the calculation of the stroke, example full or half stroke. H2S in a liquid phase by GGT method. Actually what happened in this method the concentration of the soluble sulfide including the hydrogen sulfide, the sulfide and the sulfide ion will be determined with the Garrett gas train method. A mud filtrate is acidified in the gas drain which converts all of the sulfide to H2S. The H2S then will be evolved by bubbling an inert gas which is a carbon dioxide in this case through the sample and the gas drain separate the gas from the liquid. The gas stream is then passed through the dragger tubes 
which respond to H2S by darkening along its length. The length of the darkening strips is proportional to the total sulfide in the mud filtrate. The low ring dragger tubes turns from white to brownish black and the high ring tube turns from pale blue to get black. Now with the testing procedure, using the table below you can determine the sample volume and the type of draggers tubes that required for your test. Break the tip from each end of the dragger tubes and place it in the designated hole next to the chamber 3 and make sure the arrow in the tube is pointing downward and that the o-ring seals around the tube. Next connect the rubber hose from the chamber number 3 to the dragger tube. Fill the syringe with the measured amount of a solid free filtrate and place the rubber septum over the sample entry point above the chamber number 1. Force the needle through the septum and inject the filtrate into chamber number 1. Slowly inject 10 ml of 5 normal sulfuric acid solution into chamber number 1 through the rubber septum using the syringe and needle. Immediately start bubbling the CO2 gas flow. Adjust the rate such that the ball in the flow meter stay between the two lines. Each CO2 bulb should provide about 15 to 20 minutes of a flow at this rate. Note and record the maximum darkening length. Now use the equation below to calculate the sulfide in milligram per liter. I hope this video was clear for you guys. Please support the channel with a subscribe. Don't forget to share this video with your friends and colleagues. Thank you for watching and see you next time.